In today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast, we're diving into the recent exciting changes at Brit stops. In the news, could your travels invalidate your home insurance? And we answer your questions on insurance when in Europe, insurance renewals, and keeping your batteries topped up when not in use. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now, we always say it, but please do remember to follow on your favourite podcast app and make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. Brought to you by arabasecreative.co.uk. Now, in the news, could travelling long-term, leaving your ass... Your ass? Your ass... Your pardon? <laughs> invalidate your home house. insurance. Your ass. House. <laughs> could in travelling long-term invalidate your home insurance? Well, could it? Keith, I'm not sure you'd ever get your ass insured. <laughs> My ass is insured completely and utterly. But the point is, can I leave it for any length of time? <laughs> or anybody else? This is the point. So this was recently recently mentioned on social media where people were going travelling for months at a time and then discovering that their homes were not insured because they were empty for more than 30 days. So we wanted to flag this. If you're thinking of doing your 90 days on mainland Europe or just going on an extended trip around the UK, make sure you check with your home insurance provider uh, and see what their caveat is on the house being empty and how long they will insure it for if it's left unattended. Uh, and that's the thing, unattended. Can you get somebody to house sit for you? Well, this is it. So some insurers will say maximum 30 days. Uh, others will say longer, 60 or even 90 days. But if you're, if you're organising someone to come in, and this, some insurers will offer this, that they will insure it as long as somebody is going in once a week or once a fortnight and inspecting it. Uh, and it's things like obvious things like piling up of post under the letterbox in the hallway that is a surefire sign there's nobody home uh, which of course makes the home vulnerable so uh, yeah they want somebody going and clearing the post and the other big issue that insurers are worried about a water leak so you know if you left a house unattended for a month with a, wa a burst water main that's going to do untold damage i'll be honest that would happen in a day never mind a month but someone going in regularly uh, particularly through the colder months is is going to give them some assurity it, and I suppose you could turn the, the water off at the mains, but that, that might affect the things like the central heating, might it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So lots of reasons they want someone to go in and just check nothing untoward is happening in the property. I'm delighted to be joined by Michael once again from Warners and also Tash from Life Beyond Bricks and Darren, the Urban Moto. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. We're here on the entrance of the Yorkshire Motorhome and Campervan Show. The show here is just open, but we're talking today about the National Motorhome and Campervan Show. Michael, tell us a bit more about it. There's one piece of very important news, isn't there? It is. So after 30 years, because it is the longest running motorhome, campervan and caravan show, uh, it's got a new home. It's moved from Peterborough to Newark. And why has it had to move? Uh, unfortunately, Peterborough have built houses on the showground. <laughs> so uh, we've got, not got that showground anymore. Brilliant. So a new venue, the Newark Showground. Uh, it's going to be an exciting show, that's for sure. Tash, this show is a very special place for you. Why is that? Well, the National was the first place that we did talks with Warners, so that's always going to hold a special place in my heart. Yeah. But also, uh, I've always loved the evening entertainment there. Absolutely brilliant. I'll tell you what, the evening entertainment at these shows is out of this world, isn't it? We were fortunate enough to be allowed in. Thank you for the tickets, Michael. I was blown away. The effort people go to with costumes, the bands are out of this world. It is amazing, isn't it? It's like a niche within a niche. Uh, and we've got a number of people talking at the show. Where can people find out more, Tash? Uh, if they head to the Out and About Live website, um, to the show section, uh, there you can check out the schedule for the show. Uh, it's a proper packed advice centre, including yeah. myself, Darren, yeah. and yourself. We're all on stage. Now, Darren, it's yep. great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Uh, what else can people expect to see at the show? Uh, these shows, this show in particular, is packed with uh, dealers. There's going to be so many vans, and it's great to just have a little rummage around them. You know, if you're looking for something, if you're looking to upgrade, there's so many to offer to just, just, you know, have a little look around them. And then the uh, accessory stands. There's gadgets and tech and, and accessories galore. I mean, I have to watch myself because, you know, <laughs> I've got a big motorhome, home, but I do get carried away a little bit. You've got plenty of space in your van for loads of gadgets. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I have to keep, keep a little rain on it because there is so much good stuff on offer. There's just so much to, for everyone. 
Now this show, like many of the Warner shows, you can camp at, so you can turn up with your motorhome or camper van, spend the entire weekend. It's £82 for a camping pass for the weekend, but day visitors are welcome too, just £7 for the day, and use the code MOTORHOMEMAT on the website and save a pound. Mm. To find out more about all of Warner's shows, just head to mhmp.info forward slash Warner's. It's the Motorhome Map Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now, who are Brit Stops, Matt? <laughs> That's a very good question. They've been around for years. Actually, I don't know how long, but Brit Stops was always traditionally a book of places that you could stop in your motorhome or camper van that weren't campsites. So they were traditionally pubs. Uh, farm shops, uh, places where you could park in their car park, maybe pay £10 or maybe just go and spend money in the establishment and then park for a night for free uh, and uh, somewhere alternative to a campsite. Normally you're not getting your awning out, you're not getting all your chairs and tables out and so on, uh, but it was somewhere just to stop over for a night. Really handy if you want to have a meal, a few drinks, then go back to the motorhome and have somewhere to stop. So what's happening very clever. Well, the big news is that Brit Stops was sold, I think, last year, uh, and Steve, who ran it for years, retired. Uh, and it's become an American owned business, which I find fascinating. Harvest Hosts in the USA bought it, uh, which I find really exciting. Harvest Hosts are massive. Uh, and they bought into Brit Stops. Uh, Steve retired, and his son Tom has become UK general manager. And the big change is it's no longer a book, it's become a an app <laughs> on your phone or on your uh, mobile device or even on your home computer a lot, of, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of people are very resistant to going electronic aren't they that's very true there's something to be said about having a book in the glove box particularly if you haven't got internet access uh, so it's a great question uh, we invited Tom so this is Steve's son who's now the big boss in the UK of Brit Stops to come down to the studio and he agreed uh, to tell us more about this massive change because Brit Stops a very established brand in the UK and I wanted to find out more what's changed and what's going to be the impact. Yeah so the major change we've had in the last kind of year or so is that we've gone fully digital. So previously we were a printed publication, we had a new book every year um, which would have new hosts and loads and loads of changes and everything um, and it was a huge job to be honest keeping that up every year and having to uh, phone all the hosts, check everything, add new places, take things out, move all the map numbers around. Yeah, it was a real <laughs> real physical job, um, labor of love. But uh, yeah, so we've gone fully digital. Now we have an app and yep. we also have it on the website as well if you log in on the website. Um, and we did have an app before, but uh, that was quite a bare bones app. It was me and my dad and one developer made the app. So um, we kind of did what we could with it, but uh, you know, now we have a full engineering team. Um, which has been way, way better. It's got a lot more functionality. You can search, you can favorite stuff. There's route planning, there's photos, there's reviews. We've added so much to it. Um, so yeah, it's a much, much better product. And uh, yeah, the feedback we've got on the app has just been amazing. So it's been really good. Fantastic. Well, it is really good. I'm, I have to say, first time or first hand user, uh, I think it's great. And I love the fact it's being updated all the time, isn't it? It's not an annual yeah, update that, That's a big change for us. Um, just been a thousand live update. You know, if a, if a host calls me and says we're changing phone number, we're changing hands, we have a new landlord, I can just instantly change it. And that's been so, so useful. Um, before, you know, we'd have to put a newsletter out every month with all those changes and oh, people dear. would have to copy them all down <laughs> in the book and do everything. So that's been really good. And on the other side of things, in terms of adding new hosts, it's just been really revolutionary for us as well because the speed we can, at which we can add new hosts is, is so much easier now. Um, and we have a bigger team now and we're adding more hosts at a faster rate. It's getting to the point where if we were doing a new book every year, you know, there'd be such a huge turnover and that book would be massive. Like we're, yes. <laughs> we're getting to the point where um, the book was already at the th thinnest paper we could use because <laughs> it was just too many um, hosts. Uh, and also being able to add photos is such a huge thing that I think um, it's almost like we kind of didn't realize what we we're missing out on not having yeah. the photos. And the moment they're all in there, I was like, wow, this is a huge step and the photos stuff. are really important because yeah, they yeah. form part of the decision don't they on whether you're going to yeah get and you know some of the hosts have you know 10 15 20 photos yeah. on there we couldn't have that in a book 
You know, that's no. just not doable. Um, so yeah, a lot more functionality, and I, th I think just a better product overall. Yes. Um, and yeah, the, so the feedback we've got has been so good on it, and this it's really, well, really been great. We've already used some Brit stops, and we've taken photos ourselves, and we can add them onto yeah. the listing in yeah. the review, which is brilliant. Exactly. Yeah. So it's similar to like. Um, TripAdvisor or something yeah. like that, you can add your own photos on there. And, and like you said, we have reviews as well. And the reviews are now slowly building up. We're getting more yes. and more on there. I'm, I always review anywhere where me and my girlfriend go <laughs> and eat there, yeah. um, just to try and build them up. But I think that's a useful feature too, just being able to see what other people's experiences are there Completely, and get a yeah. better sense of what it's like before you turn up. So Tom, let's just wind back in time. Yep. It was 2011, I think, or we think it was 2011 when we I'm stopped starting. I'm pretty started. sure it was 2011, yeah. And it was your dad, Steve started mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and my mum. Don't forget uh, Mandy. I won't forget She'll Mandy. Kill me I'm if sorry. I just yeah. it with my dad. <laughs> Mandy, I know how many hours you stood at shows yeah. with Steve trying to sell the book <laughs> and carrying the books into the halls mm -hmm. every show. Yeah. Boxes and boxes of them, which of course doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so 2011 it started and it grew and grew. Every year a new book was launched. I tried to find one of the first books. It was green. Yeah. And I it tried to that, find that, mine. That big. It was like a pamphlet. Uh, it had 75 <laughs> hosts in it. Wow. Yeah. And I remember talking with my parents. At that time I was studying in Dundee in Scotland so I wasn't involved in the business at that time um, and they always said that book was the hardest one to make out of all of them that was the most yeah. difficult because you're phoning somewhere and they have no idea who you are you, know, you have no evidence this will work at all and you're really just just trying to get them to give you a chance so yeah that, yeah. that was the most difficult one for them well I remember seeing it thinking this is a brilliant idea mm -hmm. and bought one and I still have it somewhere but I wanted to bring it today but I couldn't find it uh, and, and it's grown and grown it became about an inch on, or so thick didn't it in the yeah end? and there was a point where we decided to go so it used to be like kind of that big we decided to double it yeah. because it just was getting too big and then there was a point where <laughs> there was one year where it was so heavy yeah. that we had to like trim the paper size down um, like the thinness of the paper so it's just getting ridiculous it was like Turn a, into a bible yeah yeah so it's uh <laughs> so when yeah, did you get funny. involved then when did you join i joined about s seven years ago at this point okay um so even from the beginning right at the beginning of the business in the summer holidays from university i was like helping packing books me and my brother were like stamping things taking pig bags down to the post office so we've been involved since the beginning um but about six seven years ago I think it was about seven years ago, I can't remember now, but um, I got involved full time. So right. I was working in uh, content marketing at the time, just for some different companies. Uh, and my parents kind of said, oh, the business is getting to the point where we can't do it just us two anymore. So would you be happy to come in and, and, and just help and see how it goes? Um, and you know, I love business. I think it's so cool and exciting and it being a family business, you know, makes you really invested in it. Yes. So for me, it's a real uh, passion project as well that I wanted to grow. So roll forward 12 years mm -hmm. and dad and mum sell the business. Yes, so that happened in January last year. And Harvest Hosts yeah. bought it, American company. Mm -hmm. Just tell us a little bit about Harvest Hosts, who are they? So they were originally similar to us, a small family business in the States. Um, and they sold the company a little later when it was actually really, really small. It was a lot smaller than Britstops when they sold it. Um, and they've boomed it. I think they've got like 9,000, 8,000 hosts or something now. They're huge in the States. Uh, and they've got quarter of a million members. Wow. So they are big, yeah. Um, and they're just using that to um, try and expand into other places, uh, grow their own business. They've got a Canadian one called Boondockers Welcome. And just to explain, boondocking yeah. is what we would call here world camping or off-grid camping yeah, yeah this exactly, is, which yeah. is what brit stops is essentially isn't yeah it? pretty much yeah somewhere between world camping and a campsite yeah yeah, yeah. um a yeah so, but, i mean yeah exactly yeah Br a brit stop a brit um, stop yeah okay yeah trademark <laughs> um <laughs> so harvest host bought it january yeah. 2023 and you're now the general manager aren't you of the uk yeah so me and my parents had a lot of conversations kind of towards when we knew they were getting closer to their retirement mm -hmm. about what we want to do with the business and I was really interested in getting involved in it more and you know, taking it over so we'd already had that plan and over the last kind of two years before we sold the business that was in process that was transitioning slowly over towards me so my parents were working less I was taking on more um, and kind of learning how to do it all and then yeah Harvest Host approached us and we had a kind of genuine conversation with them and talked it all through and it just sounded like a honestly like such a good opportunity mm. i mean like the the difference between me running it by myself with a small team and having like a team of like 50 people in the states on it is huge yes you know, we've got the full engineering team i would never have been able to make an app like this you know by myself um and they've got so much more funding as and well. quickly as well and quickly yeah just to just to pump a load of um uh, budget into it and make it grow and expand um and the other great thing is that they actually really understand it 
because yeah. they do the exact same business in the states. It's literally exactly the same. Um, so they they I genuinely understand it, and and like the CEO Joel, I've met him a handful of times. Uh, you know, he's a motorhomer himself. Like he loves motorhoming. Um, they're coming. They, they came over to um, the UK. A few of them, and we toured around all the pubs together, um, showed them how it all works and everything. And it was awesome. And like, yeah, they're just really genuine people and, and um, actually really excited about it. So it's yeah. been great to work with them. Fantastic. Now I want to take a look in the app. So I want you to talk yeah. me through the app. Sure. But just before that, the elephant in the room, Tom. Mm -hmm. I would rather have this as a book still <coughs> in my glove box. Can I still get a Brit Stops book? No, you cannot get a Britstops book anymore. Okay. We, we have no more books. We're just app and website. Um, there's a few things for me um, personally, and I, I always say, like, for me, even if I'd taken over the business and we hadn't sold it, I would have gone this direction. Mm -hmm. And I stand by this direction for the business just in terms, terms of um, future-proofing it specifically. Yes. Um, I think if we don't have, like, the best app in the market, we're doing something wrong. You know, we want to be the leaders in the industry. Um, but on top of that, in terms of, like I said earlier, recruiting hosts and making the product better, if we want photos, if we want reviews, we want interactable things, route planning, favoriting, searching, like all these are things that people have asked us for over and over again. And it's just not feasible to do that with a book. You know, okay. it's, not, it's not possible for us to do. But it's fair to say, though, that one of the restrictions of the app is if you haven't got internet access, it mm -hmm. doesn't work. Is that right? Yeah, so at the moment, it's online only. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons for that uh, is really our security with the data. Yeah. Um, but that's been the biggest piece of feedback I've gotten. I mean, I do loads of shows all year round. I talk to customers face to face all year round. Um, and people are always saying, yeah, we want an off offline version. So I do hear that. And that's going to be our next big plan is to try and get that sorted out and figure out how we can do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like before, we, we, with the old app, we had it so you can only use it on one device at a time. Right. And the reason we did that was because I was worried about the security and people just sharing it with everyone. Um, and you know, so many people complained to me about it that now we don't do that anymore. Now you can just log in on any phone. So, you know, we do listen to people's feedback and, and I genuinely appreciate it because, you know, I, I need to know what do people want. What direction yeah. do people want it to go but in? But you can so also, two useful. of you on two phones mm -hmm. or two devices yeah, yeah. can be logged in at the same time. Yes, exactly. So and Jude and I were in the motorhome. We had, well, there was one point where we didn't have internet access, which is why I know this is true. Yeah, yeah exactly. We, we were on, to be fair, we we're on the Outer Hebrides, mm -hmm. where there aren't very many Brit stops. In fact, there are no pubs that we found. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> and, so, and so there aren't really any Brit stops. <laughs> So, but we were trying to find somewhere for coming home. In fact, mm, we were trying yeah. to find several and trying to plan it with no internet access. We couldn't do it. So we had to, we had to wait. And then both of us, though, were logged in on my subscription. Yeah. Uh, and it worked perfectly. So we could both be moving stuff around, trying to find somewhere to stop. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look in the app now, if we, if we can. Uh, and I want you to talk me through it. Um, okay, sure. so I've opened the app. Yeah. There's a lot of orange Let's do it. These so, dots are all the locations. Here's every single this one. This is mainland UK. Yeah. So, and they're on Ireland too. And Ireland as well. So, one weird. of the best things about it, in my opinion, is being able to filter things. So, let's, first of all, let's reset all your filters. Reset all. So, if we want to, for example, we just want to look at, like, we don't want to stay at pubs. I want to stay at pubs, but some people don't. Um, so, for example, these little tractors, that's a farm shop. The blue that's an attraction so they're often just different things um, and the p this is an air so if people don't know what an air is um, these are really popular in europe and yeah. they're starting to get more popular in the uk now uh, they're kind of like council-owned car parks or motorhomes with some facilities so there's no you know uh, farm shop or anything there but they're useful to know about um, and often they ask for a small donation like five pound or something just to keep it running um, but yeah, let's let's open a random host but i i just really like that you can filter things and that's so so useful um, and also, yeah, you can see exactly what type of host it is just scrolling around, which is also really, really handy. Yeah. So if we open this guy, Cross Lanes Organic Farm, so you've got a nice big photo at the top. County Durham is where we're going. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, the other really handy thing is you can favorite stuff. So yes. if we tap the love heart, adds it to our favorites, and we can easily access that later. So if you're looking at someone and you think, Actually, I really like this place, but I'm not quite yep. ready to go right now. You can save it. And you come back to it. It shows times. you. So for those listening, it tells us immediately, some photos. Uh, it tells us there's five parking spaces, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important. The postcode is there. Uh, and it says a restaurant with a farm shop supporting local producers with uh, butchers and deli. There's a bit more explanation about the place. 
uh, and it's got its opening hours when it's actually open. Yeah, which uh, I think is really handy. Yeah, it's really It's got the four good. opening hours for everywhere now, and that, that was a big job calling all of those hosts and <laughs> getting that, um, especially <laughs> the photos. Oh, my God. Yeah, trying to get them to send us photos. Pets welcome. Um, yep, yeah, so it's useful. You can see what they have. You know, do they have a restaurant? Um, do they have good hiking there? Do they have fishing? So we list everything there um, that you can do or things in the area. Um, you easily see their website on Facebook. You can see kind of where it is, and you can also just easily copy uh, the address yep. or if you tap get directions it opens you directly in Google Maps yep. so you can get there easily um, but if, if you tap the coordinates this, this yeah. long list of yeah. numbers yeah. you literally just tap it and it copies it straight away to your phone yeah. and then you can paste that into I mean, we were using Waze to get to the one we stayed in in Cumbria because uh, I wanted traffic updates yeah. that were more accurate than Google and it just pasted it straight in literally to the square foot yeah. Right to the front door. Yeah, Absolutely and that, that is a painstaking job of me sitting there on Google Maps <laughs> and making sure it's accurate. Is that what you had to do? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we put a lot of work into it, a lot of thought goes into it, and you get the parking surface as well, which yeah, is nice yeah, to know. gravel. If it's a wet day and it's grass, you know, yeah. you might want to see, call ahead and see what it's like. Um, photos, and they've added their own reviews there, which is really nice. And if you go down to the bottom, it also shows you the nearby hosts. So Alternatives. If you like that, yeah, like that area. The so next, pretty much everything you need to know is there. Yeah, and, and if we also, if we just go back, you can look at all your saved things too. So here's all your quick favourites, and you can also save things to a trip. So, for example, yeah. you could have a trip to Scotland, and you could add them all to your there Scotland you trip. my home from yeah, Lockdown. Exactly, yeah. yeah, we can see where you've been going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's so useful, and that's something that people really wanted. It's just like a favourites folder to organise themselves a bit yep. better. Um, and it's kind of like bookmarking something in a book, you know, and that's really, really handy. Um, yeah, no, it does work really well. And there's well. a route planner as well, though, that you were telling me, which I haven't used. Yes. So yes. you can plan a route. Yeah, so you can plan, um, say you're going from one end of the country to the other. Yeah. It will show you what's along that route, um, and you can favourite all those places and then kind of get an idea of what's along. So that's really useful to do too. And how many hosts are there on here now? You put me on the spot. I believe I there is roughly 11, I'm going to say 1169. Should we put me on the test and see if I'm right? 1169. Yes, that's my guess. We're going to play Brit Stop Bingo. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun out if I'm right. And what percentage of that number are pubs, Tom? <laughs> About 65, like, 70%. I love that you yeah. know that. I was actually joking. Oh, no, I know it all, yeah. Close. 1154. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. So 15 more and you've hit your target. Yeah. yeah Reach that by that. the end of the week. So let's talk about hosts. I know for a fact there are people listening to this podcast who own pubs mm -hmm. and farm shops who might be interested in listing their place on Britstops. Do they have to pay to do that? No, so it's totally free for the hosts to join. Um, it's actually a really, really great scheme for the hosts, to be honest. I mean, um, I've talked to so many local councils over the last few years since I've been more in charge of Britstops, and they're just so on our side. They really, really love Britstops, and they really help us get set up, and they help us even get in touch with some places. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's certain pubs that have joined Britstops and we've literally turned them around where they were struggling and, and getting behind and financially. Um, and you know, in, in the summer, they're getting 10 motorhomes a week. That's 10 right. paying customers a week. Yeah, that, yeah. That's just keeping them afloat. Um, so yeah, I'm really proud of it really. And it really helps support local businesses in the UK. So it's a really great system to be a part of uh, as a host. So can I ask you, how does the Britstop business model work? There's a subscription. How much is that, by the way, to, for us to buy? So it's £44 currently. Right. A um, year. A year, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, we try to keep it somewhere in line with a night on a campsite. Okay. So I think that's a good kind of rough estimate um, yeah. for what you should be paying. So basically one night you've paid for it. Pretty much, yeah. Maybe yeah. two nights if it's a cheaper campsite. And you can use it as often as you want. That's the thing, yeah. You know, use it once or twice, you've already got your money's worth. Yeah. So it's really good value for money, honestly. Um, it's so funny. I mean, we, you get such a range of people you talk to at the show. But some people will come up to me and ask me how much it is. I tell them how it works. Tell them it's £44. Pound, and they'll be like, what? Is that all? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it is. So, yeah, and yeah. it's really good value for money. It's One or two it's, nights and you've paid for it, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. You've, yeah, you've had exactly. some very memorable nights in the pub. Yeah, in, ter <laughs> in terms of the um, business model itself, so yeah, the only money we make is from that annual subscription. Okay. So people pay to access all the, all the places and the app and everything, um, and that's our total income. Um, in terms of the hosts, we don't make any money from hosts at all. So okay. we don't charge them anything. We don't take any fees. They don't have a fee to join. Um, they get to keep 100% of all the purchases on site. And do you know roughly how many users are on Britstops at the moment? It's about 30,000. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rough, something like that roughly as it goes um, up and down throughout the year as people join in travel season and stuff. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, it's something like that right now. Um, and yeah, but it, it's, it's just growing and growing really. I mean, since 
we sold it to uh, Harvest Hosts, it's just boomed. And that's been awesome to see. And they've really put so much effort and planning into the marketing, um, into the business uh, development, into partnerships, like we partnered with you and uh-huh. we're working together with you a bit more. Um, yeah, it's just been fantastic. And, and especially, again, the full engineering team. <laughs> it's just yes. been a real game changer. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, as I said earlier, the speed at which this has come on has yeah. been yeah. absolutely incredible. So just then a little bit about the future of Britstops, Tom. There's some future developments planned, which I know you can't talk about today as yeah. we record this. So you need to stay tuned. And Tom will give us the heads up when we can announce it. But what is the development plan for Britstops? <coughs> what do you anticipate happening other than the big thing you can't talk about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's one big change that will hopefully come later this year okay. if we can get it all done in time. We'll keep uh, in it's touch a bit on of that. a bit of a job, but yeah, I'm uh, very, ex- very excited about it. Um, in terms of other things, really our big focus this year and probably next year as well is just uh, growing the host platform. Okay. Trying to diversify is a big thing for us. So a lot of people love the pubs. I get a lot of people as well saying, you know, we want more farm shops, we want more unique places to visit, different things. Um, so really, I've been really pushing this year um, to just try and recruit different places. I recruited a place that lets you drive tanks the other week, which I think <laughs> is the coolest thing ever. Very cool. Um, we recruited a castle, which is really cool. Some golf clubs, um, a llama park. Just a llama some, park? Yeah, a, llama, a sky, um, skydiving school. <laughs> just some awesome places. So... Yeah, really excited about that. And that, that's really, I think, the future of Britstops is giving people the opportunity to stay at somewhere different uh, right. and even just discover these places that are a bit different. Um, like staying at pubs is awesome and that's a really cultural part of the UK that people really love. Yeah. But I just really want to capture that sense of adventure and something different as well. I think that's really important too. To find out more about Britstops, either as a user or as a potential host, you can do that at mhmp.info forward slash Britstops where you will get a discount on your membership and at the same time be helping the Motorhome Map podcast as an affiliate to Britstops themselves. Tom, thank you so much for coming in. Cheers, Matt. I know you've had a five-hour drive to get here today Yep. from Norfolk, Yep. Uh, <laughs> but you're not stopping in a Britstop though, are you? <laughs> no, we're staying in a nice hotel. <laughs> you've come in the car. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, cheating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you again and thank yeah, you, you again too. for Cheers, coming Matt. in. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. So that's Tom Clark. He's the UK general manager at Brit Stops, and Brit Stops are actually motorhome mat approved. They are. So what is motorhome mat approved, and why have they got your stamp of approval, Matt? Absolutely, yeah. So motorhome mat approved is our brand new directory of brands, companies, products, and services that I have used or had a really great experience of using, uh, brands that I would endorse. So people often say to me, Matt, who do you go to for an app or for insurance or for a tracker? And we thought we would get loads of these companies together that I've had first-hand experience of that I am prepared to say rubber stamp this is Matt approved and build a directory of all of these brands so that for you you can help I can help you research those brands uh, and help you find a solution that could work for you so Britstops are certainly a brand that I've used for years our dog-eared book has been in the glove box of the motorhome for many many years I haven't got it on me today to show you but it's written in it's ripped it's pages are folded down uh, and we would buy a new book often every year and I've used it for a very very long time and we've had some brilliant trips where we've not paid any money for campsites at all we've just used Brit stops uh, and uh, and so it was certainly a worthy brand for me to recommend and commend to you if you're looking for a similar type of trip or, or places to stop so for Motorhome Matt approved companies, head to mhmp.info forward slash approved. That's Motorhome Matt podcast, mhmp, get it, <laughs> dot info forward slash approved. And of course, when it comes to Brit Stops, you're a very happy chappy because it's now an app, as we've just heard. It is an app. It's very easy to use as well, I have to say, really easy to use. So if you're considering it, have a look, go and find Brit Stops on the Motorhome Matt approved and click the link and... Uh, you'll be able to download your own copy of it there. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com into uh, my favourite part of every podcast, the questions and answers where you ask the questions and Matt, for it is he, is the expert who will try to answer them and if he doesn't know, he'll ask somebody who jolly well does. <laughs> for it is he. For it is he. You've got, you got 1810 on us. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Lynch is in Henfield and he says, Morning, just listened to the latest episode and you mentioned an insurance 
insurance company, which is timely for me as ours is up for renewal this month. What was the name and promo code for this company again? Many thanks. Glad to know you're in better health. Uh, if you don't know, Matt had a bit of a dodgy ticker uh, a few weeks ago and we nearly <laughs> lost him, but they put some stents in and they've given him some tablets and he appears to be fine. I appear to... to to, to be fine <laughs> some tablets there's an understatement yeah don't worry if I suddenly turn round and thump him <laughs> it's because his dodgy ticker is pre-cordial thump is yeah. that what you do <laughs> so, so clear <laughs> Ripe are new to the motorhome industry, aren't they? And they are a sponsor of the Motorhome Map podcast. Yeah, so Ian, the company was called Ripe, and they are new to the industry. They've actually been around for years, uh, and they approached us a few months ago uh, with an interest in sponsoring the podcast. So I thought, well, I'm going to do a mystery shop. So I went on their website, which was orange <laughs> and big tick, because uh, it matches our brand. Uh, and I have to say, it was really, really easy. Did you say hello? No, I went on the website. This this is Boris here. <laughs> I didn't actually ring them, no. uh, although I did later. But anyway, I'll come to that. I did a mystery shop on their website and built a quote for our Andrea twin. And it was really easy, I have to say. And the premium comes back really quickly after going through the usual questions that every insurance company wants to know. Uh, and I couldn't believe the premium. It was I would really really competitive uh, and there was you just bolt on all the things you want and ignore the things you don't want so if you don't want to go to Europe then don't add European cover really simple uh, and I, I left the quit alone they did ring me uh, that afternoon and again the following day and I kept ignoring their calls because I'm still in mystery shopper mode um, and they were they were persistent for about a week and then the calls stopped coming, which I have to say, I appreciated because, you know, it's like when you get hounded, 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 really annoying. So then I rang them and went through to their call centre. they center. wouldn't answer the phone. No. <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> you ignored us. So I then, I gave them the reference number. I gave them a name. Uh, and uh, they're in Manchester. So it's a UK-based call centre. And I referenced my uh, proposal from there, made some changes to it, which they were very happy to accommodate. Um, and it was really, really easy to move forward. And, and then I said, oh, I don't need any insurance. Um, I am motorhome mad <laughs> and I claim my five pounds. I, <laughs> I didn't do that. But and, so we left the quote as it was. But I have to say a brilliant experience, uh, very positive, very easy to work with and really competitive. So, yeah, if you are looking for an insurance quote at the moment, it's definitely worth looking the notes for this episode. There's links there that will take you to them. If you do ring them up, then just quote motorhome Matt. And they'll put the phone down on you. No, they'll, <laughs> they'll give you 10% off your premium. So even more competitive than the already likely competitive premium they'll give you. So that's ripe. You can build your policy, only pay for what you need. As Matt says, reasonable pricing. Click the link in the description or call them and quote Motorhome Matt. That's one word, Motorhome Matt, with two T's on the end, to get 10% off your premium. Sarah Hubbard is in Sirencester. Hi Matt, Sarah calling from Siren Sister. My husband Kim and I bought The Beast from you last year. We follow a couple on Instagram who've travelled extensively in Morocco and Europe in a Heimer 4x4. They had an unfortunate accident in Spain, tipped their Heimer on its side on a remote mountain road. Thankfully no one was injured and with the help of Spanish locals they managed to get her back on her wheels, make their own repairs and continue their trip home. Their experience highlighted that whilst they have comprehensive insurance cover, this is reduced to the minimum legal requirement in Europe, a nasty small print surprise. We were horrified to learn this and checked our own policy only to find the same. To travel in Europe at the potential risk of total loss and huge financial consequences beggars belief. Insurance companies surely need to make you aware of this. Comprehensive does not always mean comprehensive. We'll be contacting our highly regarded insurer, Caravan Guard, to discuss updating our own policy before our next European trip. Please make everyone aware and ask that they check their insurance documents very carefully before they travel. Hope you're well again. Bye. So that's Sarah Hubbard in Sirencester. So what did you do then, Matt? Sort of a motorhome. 
<laughs> the beast what a lovely van it was too uh, it's lovely to hear from you sarah uh so these guys travel to italy or are planning to quite a lot uh and the key here is making sure that you check your small print uh and seeing what cover you actually have when you're in europe uh, and make sure you buy european insurance cover for your van when you're traveling we mentioned right just now i did ask them for a comment Uh, And they've confirmed that their European cover is fully comprehensive when you buy it. They've said to us, if the customer selects EU cover, they will be insured comprehensively, covered for theft and damage as well as third party cover. If they don't select EU cover, they would only be insured to the minimum third party cover, which is legally required for that country. Yeah, so check the small print in the schedule of insurance. And make sure you ask before you renew uh, at the beginning of your policy, especially if you're planning to later add on European cover. Uh, So, yeah, really important. Thanks for flagging that, Sarah. You should check the schedule anyway for all of the small print that insurers offer and what they do include and what they don't cover. Particularly, as we mentioned earlier, home insurance. Check that as well. If you're not going to be there for any length of time, check you are insured. Simon Barton's in Plymouth. What's the best way to keep your cab battery topped up when it's not being used for a few weeks? Are there any DIY installs or gadgets I can buy to help with maintaining the battery? the podcasts we are new to the lifestyle and have learnt a lot from watching you on youtube he says <laughs> hi simon thank you very much for your question it's a really good question as well so uh, you're right if you leave your motor home unattended for two three weeks uh, the starter battery which is the, ba- the cab battery as you call it is likely to go flat particularly if you've got a tracker or an alarm connected to the motor home uh, so one solution in that scenario where you've got those secure devices wired to it is to fit what's called a battery maintainer and they are simply a small solar panel we sell them at thatledgershop.com just search battery maintainer you'll find the uh, examples of them there Uh, ring make a great one that you just uh, crocodile clip onto the battery uh, or you can plug it into the accessory socket I always call it a cigarette lighter and Keith tells me off but the little 12 volt socket in the dashboard and it will then take power from the sun <clears throat> straight into the starter battery and keep it maintained at 12 plus volts uh, really handy the other thing you could do is disconnect it now if you haven't got a tracker or an alarm on the motor you could just lift the earth off and that would stop it going flat or If your ignition switch has a little red button on it, when you're turning it off, press the little red button in, which is by your thumb as you're turning the key, turn the key all the way back, take the key out, shut the driver's door, you get 15 seconds to lock the motorhome on the central locking, and then the battery will automatically disconnect itself. So what do you do? Just repeat that. Press the little red button. This is on the ignition key socket where you put the key into the ignition. Sometimes there's a red button. It was an accessory that Fiat, Peugeot and Citroen fitted on some chassis. Press that button in, turn the key. It will go one click further back than normal. uh, And then you get 15 seconds to shut the door, use the button to lock the van. And then automatically the ECU will disconnect the battery from the motorhome and stops it going flat. We have motorhomes that we store and they are stored for months with this function activated and the batteries no longer go flat. It's really that, clever. That's feature. a good tip. One, take the battery, <laughs> take the, the key with you. But secondly, when you, get back, <laughs> when you get back in, what do you do? So then you use the key to unlock the driver's door and you get in, turn the key and all the ba- motem come, comes back to life. It reconnects the battery for you automatically. The clock's going to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and you might have lost all the tuning in the radio depends what radio you've got but it's a really simple way of disconnecting the battery with the key it's very clever the key is get it the key is you get 15 seconds to lock it and then it disconnects the battery yeah that's the 15 seconds is which you, you, you forget to take the the uh, uh, seat belt off you trip over it <laughs> as you're, you're exiting your elbow catches some that's that 15 seconds yeah that one yeah been there done that uh thanks very much for all your questions that's a good tip from matt there uh, how do people get in touch then matt really easy go to mhmp.info forward slash ask matt you can record your question as sarah did by clicking the little orange button you can hear it 
it back before you press submit so you can make sure you're happy with it or you can fill in the form again just go to mhmp.info forward slash ask matt if you do record it please tell us where in the country you are absolutely that's mhmp.info forward slash ask matt and people can su- subscribe on youtube can't they, they can please if you're watching on youtube like simon please hit the subscribe button a huge number of you watching on youtube don't subscribe subscribing actually means we help promote the podcast and it grows the audience which means youtube promote it a bit harder and please share it with a friend if you know somebody that would find this informative useful entertaining please tell a friend about it and we can help grow the popularity of the podcast which would be brilliant have you got a cushion a cushion these chairs are hard on my ass <laughs>